you haven't heard about the Scotty Resources uh, system or our project yet, I'm happy to tell you about it right now. And if you don't get enough information here, then our booth is at 901. And please come over to talk to myself or Brad after that. So we are located up in BC's beautiful Golden Triangle District. But I am going to make some forward-looking uh, uh, statements today. So just be aware that this website or this presentation is available on our website if you want to check out this forward-looking statement in the future. We have Brad Rourke at the helm, an experienced executive uh, that's done a lot of work in the energy industry as well as the uh, private um, corporations in Alberta. Myself, I'm Vice President of Exploration. Uh, we've got Ernie Mast, who is former CEO of uh, Minera Panama, who put together Cobra Panama, as well as John Williamson, who, uh, formerly of Kamenak and Committee Bay, and then we've got Steven Stein, who was the founding member of Black Diamond Camps. Those are all our directors on our board. We have right now 87,000, or 80, 87 million shares outstanding, uh, fully diluted, we're at 106, and we've got a market cap of $18 million. We've got $2.3 million in the kitty right now, and if you look at our nearest peers, up in the Golden Triangle, our next door neighbors are Predium, who has a market cap of $2 billion, and we've got Ascot to the south of us with a market cap of $180 million. We are road accessible. We have 18,500 hectares in the Golden Triangle. Our main flagship asset is the Scotty, or past producing Scotty Gold Mine, uh, located here. And that's about 20 kilometers south of Bruce Jack Mine and about uh, 20 kilometers north of Ascot's mine that they're putting into production in the next few years, which would be the Premier Mill. We 100% uh, own this, the past producing Scotty Gold Mine. Uh, it produced 100,000 ounces of very high grade gold, 16.2 grams gold uh, recovered back in the early 80s. This didn't run out of ore. This mine shut down due to the economics at the time. Uh, gold price plummeted in the early 80s and the interest rates went to 20% and they had a $20 million facility at the time. They lost the mine to the Royal Bank and they sat on that for a number of years. It had a few little kicks early in the early 2000s, but it really didn't get a real exploration program done on it. We have a lot of potential and mostly that's due to our expanded land package in recent years. So we acquired a massive claim block that surrounds that claims. Uh, well, I'll talk about it later in the presentation. But that was held separately from the Scotty Gold Mine, and that's really where we see our advantage, is expanding the resources significantly from what they ever had back in the day. This is what the Scotty site looks like itself. It's road accessible, so you can drive right up to the mine. The mill itself was actually designed and built underground, so the, the mill is still exists. We do actually have a mine permit on site from the early 80s. Uh, so the mill was here, the main mine was up in the mountain here where they mined 90% of the ore from the, the historic M zone. There's a tunnel that goes through the mountain over to the A portal over here, and that was put in so that the, the workers could access the site and not be prone to any of the avalanche risks that are associated with the area. An interesting fact here is that this lake bed here used to be fully filled with, uh, with water back in the day. Um, it was backed up against an iceberg, or an, uh, a glacier at this end, and the glacier basically let go and all the water flushed out. And because of that, we now have tailings exposed at surface and they have grades that look like they average about two grams per ton in the tailings. Looking at this, this is the historic sections from the area. What we see in green is open stopes that they've mined out and then the workings and then some of the intercepts that you see on there. I know those are gonna be a little bit hard for you to read, but. They're meters and grams, so 2.9 over 49 uh, grams a ton, or 4.94 meters of 22 grams. Just a lot of really high-grade intercepts. And you'll note that they had a lot of drilling done beneath the mine, but they didn't extend it too far from that. And that wasn't a function of the ore not being there. It was more of a function of where they could drill from, because they were drilling from underground, and they were only able to step out so far along that vein. The average hole length is only 70 meters on the mine. They were only ever progressing that mine a little bit at a time to, to provide more ore to go to the mill. But they weren't looking at putting this into a bigger system, which is where we came in. So the property was basically acquired about four years ago from us, and we've been working to clean up the company since then. We've finally done that and have done some real advanced work on it. So we remodeled the geology and came up with some new figures and models on how we want to drill and progress this project. Um, we've come up with some theories on how this mine actually exists in the area and how we can expand it. 
One of the features of the mine is that it does occur as parallel vein systems. These are pure type pyrite rich veins that are mesothermal in nature and so very deep and long lived and they occur in stacks. And the past drilling of it, these would be open workings and you can see all the drill holes off of these where they expanded these veins. Most of the production was from the M zone here. We've taken that and we've stepped back and we said we can drill this a little bit better than what they could. They basically drilled off all the pads that they could drill off underground and so we've stepped back and we started drilling from surface. A big move happened in our company in April this year when we acquired the Summit Lake property which surrounds the 400 hectares of the Crown Grants where the actual mine and mine permit exists at. This land was held separately for 25 to 35 years before this. It is heavily glaciated, but has experienced massive glacial retreat in the re recent future or recent years. We are looking at touching ground that hasn't been walked on since the 1990s. Early 1991 is the last major documented program that hit the ground. And since then, a massive amount of ice has, ice has pulled back. So our exploration program this summer focused on assessing those areas where the ice had pulled back. And we were mapping and sampling from things that nobody had ever seen before. And that was our real advantage there and it's never seen a drill. So our last year, these are the showings that we came up with, with great surficial results. This is our first pass on the ground and we'll go back again next year. We have a lot of other areas that we'd like to test out. We were primarily following up on some uh, geophysical anomalies that were identified in the 1980 survey and we look to refly and have a better high res image of that survey done this year, as well as some ground IP. But I personally took the greatest sample of my life this summer where we hit 536 grams per ton gold at surface and that was in a grab sample where we chipped out. These are very high grade samples and they're widespread across the property. This is the domino showing where that sample was taken from. Down here, we have multiple high grade hits in that zone. These are not float samples, these are chipped out. So this is 536 grams, we have 34 over here. And then we also took a chip sample, so a continuous chip sample over 5.3 meters, and it ran um, 10.5 grams a ton on that. And the two highest grade samples were at the ends of that chip sample, which suggests that the mineralization extends outwards from that, and maybe we can have a wider zone here. So this is the domino zone itself. It's about 700 meters long. We have samples with one or two grams of gold all the way down here. And we only spent three days on it, just kind of kicking, kicking around, looking at and seeing what was there. So that's something we're going to target next year and follow up with a drill bit. But if you step back and take a look of where that's situated on our property, that's where things get really exciting. So Scotty Gold Mine itself is an east-west structure, sheeted veins, these massive pure tight rich veins over here. The domino structure, also largely east-west trending, exists over here. It's got a strike length of 700 meters. It's 1.9 kilometers to the Scotty Gold Mine there. We're gonna go in and drill the domino this year and see if we can provide evidence to suggest that this system is much larger than was ever anticipated before. Lots of high grade gold intercepts across the property where they did drill outside of the Scotty gold mine, but most of the drilling was focused on the Scotty gold mine and just mostly production focused drilling. The average hole depth was only 75 meters on the Scotty gold mine. When we drilled it this summer, we put one deep hole into it. So the three zones that we targeted were the Bend vein, the Blueberry vein, and the Scotty Goldmine vein. And so we released these results in early January. We had a nice uptick in our stock, and then we had a $2 million investment made by Eric Sprott after that, following that. These are some of our high-grade intercepts from that. So the Bend vein, 73.3 grams over 4.28 meters. The Blueberry vein, we've got seven, almost 7.5 seven grams over 34.78 meters. And we've got the Scotty Gold Mine, so 11.72 over 10.95. All exceptional gold hits in the area. Blueberry and Scotty are significant step outs in identifying new zones in that mineralized system. And Ben Vane is, is basically targeting a, a known resource block in that area and confirming the grade within that system. So next year we look to go back, confirm all these well, not confirm these results, but follow up on these results and expand the resource outside of these zones. But our main target will also be that domino showing to prove that the surface mineralization that we see there continues outwards. So we look to do a 5,000 meter plus drill program next year. We're gonna fly some uh, newer EM surveys over the area, which is electromagnetics, uh, target IP surveys over certain targets. 
And then we do a follow up with more superficial sampling of that retreating glacier field, just to see what else we can see from that area. Just to recap, we do own a past producing mine in BC's Golden Triangle. It is road accessible. Predium's power line goes within 500 meters of our existing mine, which was a de uh, in the back in the day was basically a diesel operated mine. So we have a lot of advantages to the terrain now that wasn't there before. It's 48 kilometers north of Stewart, which is a deep water port that Predium and other mines ship their ore out of. We have a significant resource upside that was never realized before. Property scale exploration was largely lacking on the property, and we've acquired a significant land package that surrounds those past producing claims. 20, uh, 2020 field season will see us on the ground as soon as the snow melts out. We will be drilling multiple targets. The three targets that we already hit will be expanded upon, as well as our new showings that we found on the Summit Lake property. So a lot of exciting news to come out of us in 2020. And yeah, uh, we're at booth 901. I encourage you to come by and ask any questions if you would uh, like to talk to us further. Thank you for coming.